So, the IoT system contains four basic components. First component is the sensors and the actuators. Second one is a device. Third one is a gateway. And the last one is the cloud platform. So when you say a sensor, who can tell me what is a sensor? Guys, are you around? Yes, we are. Yes. Okay, and you mute your microphone and you tell me what is a sensor. Sensor is a device which uses to take the environmental condition to change into a, a electric connection. Okay, th thank you. So, what is now an actuator? An actuator? Yes, please. Is, yeah. is a device which converts electrical energy into mechanical energy. So, is it the sensor and the actuator the same thing? That is an actuator. Yes, I'm, I, I, I'm asking an actuator and sensor. Are the same thing? Are not the same. So, in a, who, who can give me an example of an actuator? Example is a motor. A motor, motor can change can take electric energy and change it into to mechanical energy. Okay, okay, thank you. So if uh, you are not talking, you have to mute your microphone so that you, you can avoid the noise, please, my friends. Then, a sensor is an electronic device that converts physical changes into electrical signal, and an actuator is an electrical device that changes electrical signal into uh, that can convert electrical energy into any other form of energy. So, guys, now, if we have like a relay, do you know what is a relay? Yes or not? Yes. So, is it a relay, an actuator, or a sensor? Relay. It is an actuator. It is an actuator. Why? What can switch? That switch. Uh, that switch is it, it is actuated by electricity. Relay is an electrical actuator because it accepts an electrical energy and it converts it into a mechanical energy. Then. The next component is a device. So actually, when you say a device, it can be a microcontroller, like an Arduino. It can be a Raspberry Pi. It can be floppy, and so on, or no DMCU. Actually, it is a computing, a computing device that can be interfaced directly with the sensors and the actuators. Then, the next part of the IoT system is a gateway. A gateway can be a router. Actually, an IoT gateway is the device that connects an IoT device with the cloud. It is the, an intermediate part between the cloud and the uh, the IoT device, or, or what you, you can say, a thing. Then, a cloud, it is a, a network of servers hosted on the internet, and they can be accessed via internet access. 
So, we are going to see, or we are going to, to talk in details what is every part and how and its role in a computer system. So, we say now the IoT architecture consists of, of different layers of technology and there is no single consensus on the architecture for IoT, which is agreed university. So, this means up to today, there is no single there is no single IoT architecture that has been agreed by all researchers. So, depends on the solution, the IoT architecture can differ from one researcher to another. There is no single agreed IoT architecture. As we are going to see, uh, different IoT architectures have been proposed by different researchers and uh, those uh, architectures are categorized are grouped into layers and those layers maybe can have a common uh, characteristics among different IoT architectures proposed. So let me say now uh, we want to monitor the crops growth or even the health status of the crops. What you do first, you will put, you will deploy the sensors into the field. The sensors are there, I go to collect the, the data or environment parameters from the field. Those sensors can be the cameras, they can be the temperature sensors, they can be the moisture sensors, even uh, the other different sensors and the GPS sensor. Then the data co collected by the sensors are going to be transferred to the gateway via wireless co connectivity. This wireless connectivity, it might be a LOLA communication, it can be a Wi-Fi communication, it can it can be Bluetooth communication, it can be, be iPhone communication and so on. Then at the end, the gateway as it is connected that with the internet, it is going to aggregate data from different sensor device or sensor nodes and push those data to the cloud where the data are going to be now processed, stored, analyzed, and then the end users can be connected to the cloud to, to, to view the status of the crops, <coughs> to view the status of the crops in real time. And even these operators through the cloud platform can even send some of the command to, to the actuators located on the field if they want something to happen in due time. Okay. Now, when you say the sensors, the sensors collect the data from the environment or object under measurement. The actuator at the other side can intervene to change the physical condition that generates the data. Let me say, like, uh, we are monitoring the air quality into the room. We are going to set up, like, different kind of the sensors for monitoring the air quality. Let me say we have deployed the temperature sensor and the humidity to, co to monitor the temperature in the environment. If the temperature is above the threshold, we are going to tell the actuator to, to operate or to turn on the air conditioner so that it can change the physical conditioning that was changing the temperature inside the house. An actuator might be 
for example, a shot of power supply, like a relay, it can adjust the airflow valve, uh, kind of an attic valve. It can be, it can move a low boat gripper in assembly process and so on. So by simply a sensor and actuator, both together, they, they provide so-called a transducer. Let's say now a transducer is uh, an electronic device that can convert from one form of energy into another, which means a transducer, a sensor is a transducer, an actuator is a transducer, but you can't say a transducer is a sensor or a transducer is an actuator. No. Now, what is a device now in an in Internet of Things system? A device combines hardware and a software that directly interact with the outside world. I have given you an example that a device can be a microcontroller, can be a Raspberry. So a microcontroller or a Raspberry, it is a hardware, but that has to perform its function by interacting with the software located in the program memory. So these devices can be connected to the network to push or to communicate the data from the sensors. This device can be communicate with the cloud platform via the internet connection. These devices can interact with the cloud directly or indirectly. If the devices have the capability to connect with the cloud platform, they can push the data to the cloud automatically. If they don't have the capability to communicate with the cloud, they are going to need another intermediary part between the cloud and these devices for sharing the data collected from the environment. Now, what is a gateway? A gateway is an electronic device that help the devices which are not directly able to be connected on the internet to reach the cloud services. I can give you an example. Let me say I have uh, like an Arduino Uno. An Arduino Uno interfaced with the Bluetooth. This uh, microcontroller node uh, when it is integrated with the sensors, it can collect the data from the environment and it can communicate the data with nearby devices via the Bluetooth communication technology. But this device cannot send their data to the cloud because it, is, it doesn't have capability to communicate via the internet connectivity. It doesn't have traditionally the internet connection. So what we do, we take the data from uh, this Arduino interface with uh, Bluetooth, then we push those data to the nearby gateway via the Bluetooth communication technologies. As the gateway is directly connected with the internet, it is going to push the data from the device to the cloud in behalf of the device itself. So, the term gateway has specific function in networking. I think you are, you are doing the course of computer networking. You all know in a computer networking we have a gateway. And the, the gateway in a computer networking is defined as the, let me say, the gate, the gate of the network. If you want to, to go out from the internal network 
to go outside of the network, you are going to pass it through the last gate. That gate or a common device, it is called the gateway. So the gateway is used also to describe the class of devices that process data on behalf of a group of the devices. You can have multiple sensor nodes, multiple devices that are created data from the environment, but they don't have the computation capabilities. So the gateway again can aggregate, can collect data from those different sensor nodes, and then it does data processing on behalf of individual device. The data from each device now is sent to the cloud platform, where it is processed and combined with data from other devices. And the, at this point, the data can be stored permanently and uh, data can be visualized by end users via the different uh, user interfaces like smartphone, uh, personal computer tablet, and so on. Now, a gateway can manage the traffic between the network that use different protocols. A gateway is responsible for protocol translation and the other interoperability tasks. What they mean by this? As you have seen, the IoT device might be using different network communication, like Bluetooth, like the Wi-Fi, like the rural communication, like the RFN, like the GSM. But all of those data, they have to be pushed to the cloud via the internet connectivity, which are using like the IP version 4. Then we have to convert from the IP communication protocols from the device, then convert it into the communication protocol that are going to be used by the gateway for transferring the data to the cloud via the public internet. A IoT gateway device is sometimes employed to provide a connection and translation between device and the cloud. A gateway device acts as a proxy, receiving data from a device and the packaging it for transmission over transmission control protocol. So it can receive the data from the device, then it can transmit them or package it demo for transmission over the internet communication protocols. A gateway is dedicated to the device that don't have electrical power to perform required network transmission. This means some of the devices don't, might have even the capability to be connected to the internet. They might be, have the capability to be connected directly with the cloud platform, but they might suffer the ethical power. They don't have enough ethical power to transmit the data to the cloud. At this time, even the gateway can intervene. So, the other ways where the gateway can be used, when the, the devices don't have processing capability needed for transport via security. So, the devices might be able to transmit the data to the cloud, let you have the enough power to, to perform network transmission, but they might not have the processing capabilities needed for the transport via security.
as such, can't communicate with the Google application programming interface. Might be used when the device don't have loudable connectivity to the internet, for example, Bluetooth devices. So if the devices doesn't have the capability to be connected on the internet, even the gateway can intervene. A gateway now might be used even when the participating device are capable of communicating without one. In this scenario, the gateway has value because it provides the processing of the data across multiple devices before it is sent to the cloud. So instead of sending everything to the cloud, a gateway can process, can do so-called pre-processing of the data from different devices, it can compress the data from different devices and only send to the cloud the, the crucial information that are needed. Another one, let me say we have an issue of uh, we have an issue of uh, internet which is not stable. So if the internet is not stable, some of the message or the packet of data can be lost when the internet is not available. So now the gateway can be used to create the data from the device and then push them to the internet. If the internet is not available, the gateway can send the data to the local databases and if the internet it comes back, now the gateway can take the data from a database and push back to the cloud immediately. So the gateway can do condensing, can condense data, can compress data to maximize the amount of data that can be sent to the cloud over the single communication network the gateway can store the data into the local database and then forwarding them to the cloud when the connection to the cloud is available. A gateway can provide a real-time clock to the device that can't manage the timestamp as well as or keep them well synchronized. A gateway can do IP version C version 6 to IP version 4 translation. So most of the IoT devices are, use, uh, are using IP version 6 for uh, accommodating a billions of IoT devices. So because by using the IP, IP version 4 for assigning an IP addresses to each device in the IoT communication, it is not possible because IP version 4 addresses are limited and it can't accommodate all of the IoT devices. So for accommodating the billions of IoT devices, the IP version 6 addressing techniques, it is the basic candidate. So at the IoT device, the devices are using the IP version 6, but at the other side of the gateway, the network connectivity we have between the gateway and the cloud, they are using the IP version 4. So we need a translation between the IP version 4 and the IP version 6. See, a gateway can be also act as a local cache for a few more update so it can uh, be used as uh, a local storage of the female update where those updates can be accessed very faster now what is now an iot cloud platform after your audit project is deployed and operating 
you need an efficient, scalable, and affordable way to both manage those devices and handle all of the information and make it work for you. When it comes to storing, processing, and analyzing data, especially big data, it is hard to beat the cloud. So a cloud platform now, we are talking about, now it is a, a space on the cloud, on the server, that has been built to receive the data from the sensors, from the device. Then it does data processing, data storing, analyzing data, and then give access to end users. A cloud platform, each cloud platform can receive data from the sensor node via any, um, we can have via different type of communication protocols that can intervene uh, during this situation. And the article the platform, it does control of, uh, it does control of uh, and the management of the IoT device. And uh, for uh, the devices in the center node to publish the data to the cloud platform, first of all, they have to subscribe to the cloud where they want to communicate and so on. Then, if the data are available to the cloud, the cloud platform can notify the end users or their subscribers now via different cloud or client application. The IoT communication architecture, it, it defines different layers or boundary where different uh, activities are being performed. So these layers can adopt different technologies, components, and so on. So let's now describe different layers of IoT communication architectures. First, we have uh, so-called physical layer or physical device. That is where the things in the IoT are located. Those sensors, those actuators, those devices are located in a physical device. We have the gateway, which is now a border or a link between the devices and the cloud. We have now an integration, which is a layer implemented by the protocols for the around the communication between sensor nodes and the servers. We have the application which does data processing analytics, of course. The integration and application, these are two parts of the cloud platform. So now the physical device. It is that we have sensors which collect the data from the environment. And if the device is it does have the internet routing capabilities and the power communication capabilities, this device can communicate directly the data to the cloud via the integration layer which is implemented by the protocols. Now, if the device does not have the internet communication capability, or it does not have the processing capabilities and the power computation capabilities, it can push the data to the gateway. Then at the end, the gateway can push the data back to the cloud via integration layer. Then at the application layer, the data can be stored, can be transformed, can be analyzed, even can be uh, visualized by end users. So the integration and application layer implement so-called now cloud platform or cloud layer. 
So let's define every layer now. So we have uh, sensors are used to capture the parameter or the data from the environment and convert them into electrical signals. Actuators are there for the processing of automation to perform any physical action for bringing the environment in normal condition. The communication between the device and servers can happen in two ways, either direct or even via the gateway if the sensors does not have the capability to communicate with the cloud. We have a gateway layer. The gateway gets the data from various sensor nodes, and then it performs network translation or translation of different messages received from different types of devices, and it provides services like data filtering. It can compress the data so that it can only send few data on the cloud. It can delete some of the data and combine data from different devices. Then it can, at the end, send data to the cloud. Or it can even receive data from the cloud and push them back to the center nodes for performing any action via the actuating device. So now we have the integration layer. Most of the time, this layer is hosted in the cloud. This layer would be responsible for creation of the data from the gateway and storing such data and storing in such way that they can be acquired and processed. So the integration layer is a software is a software layer that is implemented in the cloud via communication protocols and it allows data from the gateway to be stored on the cloud that go to be processed, analyzed and so on. We have the application layer where the application layer is responsible for processing the data collected from the cloud, provide data storage, and uh, even provide the data visualization for the end users through different kind of user interfaces, such as smartphone, personal computer, tablet, and so on. Now it's your time. You can unmute your microphone. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, please. So this crowd uh, is like an application or? So I, I, I said a cloud platform. A cloud platform, well, let me say start by what is an IT cloud or a cloud we are talking about. A cloud is a network of servers that are hosted on the internet and which can be accessed via the internet connection. So now, on top of those servers, so the owner of the, the, the cloud, then it can come up with different cloud platform which are the software or the system designed for working with the IoT system. They are there, they can accept the data from the sensors, they can do data processing, they can perform data storage and even visualization by the end users or even those cloud uh, suppliers they can even give you a space where you can build from the scratch your software for managing the whole IoT system that has been deployed by the developers. Am I answering your question? Okay, thank you.
No other question? So if there is no question, we are going to end the, the meeting, but